Where was Allah when I needed Him? Where was I when I was having this problem? Why didn't He help me at this occasion? People ask this question, don't they? This question even comes in your head sometimes. Where was Allah? And Allah's answer is, I've always been there. And I'm taking care of your tongue as you get to say that. How do you think the voice comes out of your voice box? How does the air come out of your mouth till you question Allah? He gives you the strength to do that. Be convinced you will overcome whatever is bothering you. Be it sickness or loss or tragedy or whatever negativity it may be. It is only a phase. You shall overcome it by the qudra, the power, the will, the mercy of Allah. It's going to happen. Be convinced. O oh mankind, listen well. I may not be with you much longer. The weak among you, feed them on what you eat. Dress them as you are dressed. You will meet your God and he will call you to account for your actions. Let those who are present warn those who are absent. You are all descended from Adam and the best among you is he who most regards God. Think deeply about what I say. Let all your feuds be abolished. You must know that every Muslim is the brother of every other Muslim and all Muslims are brothers one of another. Between Muslims there are no races and no tribes. Nor must you take anything from your brother except what is given freely. Do not oppress. When you abide by your parents' advice or counsel or their request, then you're honoring them. When you abide by the laws of a society, you're respecting the laws of society. You're not just obeying the laws of that society, you're respecting the laws of that society. When we're abiding by the commandments of Allah, we're actually honoring Allah, not just obeying Him. Therefore, disobeying Allah's commandments is actually a denial of Allah's nobility, His grace, His greatness. When Allah wants you to get something, to achieve something, or to give you something, nobody can stop you. Muhammad peace be upon him laughed one day and when he laughed the companion said why are you laughing he says I'm looking into the day of judgment and now you know every time the prophet saw the day of judgment he would cry he would panic he would worry for everyone but this one time he smiled and he said I laughed because the people on the day of judgment there's a group of them that will laugh who is they there are people on Yom Al-Qiyamah who will laugh who are they they are people who committed sins and they'll laugh on the day of judgment. Who are they? What kind of sins? He says, they will be people laughing and people will say to them, why are you laughing? We've sinned, we're ruined. You've sinned and you're gonna, you're, you're laughing. So yes, we made Toba and our sins became good deeds. And because of these sins, we're going to Jannah. What is Ramadan? People say, we're fasting. That's only a part of it. It is the month of peace, the month of tranquility, the month of cure, the month of goodness, the month of forgiveness, the month of mercy, the month of attaining paradise, the month of the Quran, the month of revelation, the month of celebration of being a Muslim where we practice self-restraint. We don't just do what we want. We do what the Almighty has ordained. Subhanallah. So it is our duty to make an effort with the word of Allah. Those who love Allah, Allah uses them and employs them for good work on earth. Sometimes some people call you and they need your help and you answer them. You know that? Allah has sent them to you. Allah has chosen you. You know when you're tired and you go out and do an act of goodness, Allah has chosen you. The fact that you have the ability to do that, Allah has chosen you. If Allah loves someone, He will use them. He will send those people to you when you least expect it. You are special. And mark my words, any good you do to others, it will come back. Double, triple, mock, quadruple folds in ways you least expect it. When you're kind to others, Allah will be kind to you. When you reach out to others, Allah will reach out to you. When you're assisting others, you will definitely receive the assistance of Allah. And if you were to create ease for others, Allah will create ease for you in this world and the next. If Allah has made me and He told me, worship me alone, how do I know what and how to worship Allah? How do I know?
Should I wave my hands? Should I blink my eyes? Should I turn my head? Should I stamp my feet? Should I hit the drums? What should I do? What is going to be pleasing to Allah? Is it from my brain? The answer is no, it's not from your brain. Allah must decide how he wants me to worship him. I cannot do it on my own. I need to know. Some people when they want to worship Allah, they just do anything and say, I'm sure Allah will be happy. It's worship. What, what are you talking about? You can't just shake your head like this and say, I'm sure Allah will be happy with this. What is that? Where did you get it from? Did someone teach you? If they did, who was it? If it came from Allah through the messengers, you are right. If it came from someone else, you are wrong. No matter how right you think you are, you are wrong because Allah did not teach you that. When your problem goes away, if it's a money problem, if money comes in, if it's a health problem and health comes back, if it's a family problem, the family problem goes away. None of the good things in this life are worth anything compared to that one gift. That one gift is Yahdi Qalbahu. He'll guide his heart. Your heart will be at peace. No matter what is happening in life, there's still a smile on your face. And people are looking at you and saying, why are you smiling? Why are you okay? Look at what's happened to you. Look at what's going on. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. It's cool. The Prophet ﷺ said, There are seven whom Allah will shade on a day when there is no shade except for His. And He said, وسلم, They are a just ruler, a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah, a person whose heart is attached to the masajid, Two people who love each other and they meet each other and depart from one another all for the sake of Allah. A person who is tempted by someone of beauty and high status, but he guards himself saying, Inni akhaf Allah, I fear Allah. And then someone who spends in charity and conceals it in such a way that his right hand doesn't know what his left hand is giving. And then someone who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private and that causes them to weep. Allah never ever judges you based on your sin. Allah judges you based on your repentance. La ilaha illallah. You can have committed sin all your life. Allah says, you know what? Your judgment is not based on that. It's based on your repentance. Did you repent? Did you turn? Did you become a better person? It's not based on your past. People will never forgive the sin you've committed. Even if you've changed your life totally. In most cases, they won't. It's humankind. We're not Ghafoor. We're not Rahim. We're not Wadud. Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. Allah is the most merciful, the most forgiving, the most compassionate, the most kind, the most good, etc. etc. But people are not. They will throw you out based on one mistake you made. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, speaks about a charity. And how important it is and not just that which is monetary, but he says the expression on your face is also a charity. He says, smile, the smiling upon the face of your brother is an act of charity. Wow. So he wants you to have a good expression. Did you know that nowadays the studies have proven that when you have a good expression on your face, you actually empower those you interact with and you cheer them up and create a positivity within them simply by virtue of your positive expression. Everything that happens in your life is part of a plan that Allah has chosen for you. It's a test for you and for others around you, depending on what exactly you're going through. Someone is hurting you, harming you, swearing you, abusing you. The test is for you, how you're going to react. And the test is for them, why they are doing that and when it will stop and how it will stop or whether they will wait for the punishment of Allah to overtake them and so on. So the test is on all sides. You could be having cancer and you don't know. And because every day you read a verse or two of the Quran, you came across by the mercy of Allah. These verses that are so powerful, they eradicated your disease. You didn't know the doctor didn't know. No one diagnosed. No one picked it up. One day on Qiyamah, you're going to find out. Do you know what happened? Let's show you. Come. Allahu Akbar. There is nothing more powerful than this. Please read the Quran. You don't understand. And don't just read a portion every day that would exclude the rest of the Quran. Give a time to cover it cover to cover. Give a time, a portion, set a marker. I start from the beginning today 
and trust me i'm going to read a verse two verses a page depending on how fluent you are i put a marker continue tomorrow put a marker continue the next day wallahi a day will come when your level will have gotten such that you would look back and say la ilaha illallah had it not been for the mercy of allah i wouldn't have been rightly guided basically we live every day and we see people dying we pray for, for their janaza some of us may wash the body and we see they are going this dunya will not keep people living forever but still we fall in their sin in the same trap the love of dunya and the love of dunya meaning when we favor the dunya over our akhirah when we favor this life over the hereafter when i disobey allah and the key for every evil is the love for for this dunya trust allah for everything no matter what you lose you trust allah you win you trust allah you gain you trust allah you you have a problem you trust allah you, things are not going your way you thank him even more and you talk to him that's a very good habit to talk to allah and allah knows it more than you do but it's good for you to like you know cry to him tell him he knows but he wants to hear it from you as well it's like your dua allah already knows it but you're making it he knows it when we're in desperate need and we call out to Allah Allah hears it but there is something the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has taught us he says in your days of ease remember Allah then in your days of hardship Allah will remember you connect with Allah so that in your days of hardship that are definitely coming because in surah al-ankabut Allah tells us he's going to test all of us does man think that he's going to be left alone without being tested i say i'm a believer and then allah's happy with you and happiness do you think happiness really means that you're not going to be tested when allah loves you he tests you more when you look at someone who's not used to something and they're favored they say oh wow you mean i put my head on the ground only for he who made me yes i don't have to go and confess to another human being as a muslim i just confess only to the one who made me you mean he will forgive me immediately? You mean Islam is based on mercy and forgiveness? You mean I'm a good person? You mean I can go to paradise by just seeking the forgiveness of the Almighty and fulfilling obligations, staying away from prohibitions, worshipping him alone and no one else? Yes, 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 that is Islam.